Hello, and welcome to the Wisconsin Association for College and Mission Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Daisha. I will be your facilitator for this event. We are so excited to have you participating. We have some exciting schools lined up to speak with you today, but before we get started, I'd like to share a few housekeeping items. First, your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists will not be able to see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Uh, if you're referring to a specific school, it'll be helpful if you could list their name in your question and they'll be able to respond to you directly. We have had many sessions happening tonight, uh, so feel free to check out the uh, StriveScan website for the schedule. If you're interested in any others, this presentation is going to be recorded and it will be available at strivescan.com slash Wisconsin. I now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Pacific University, Oregon. Perfect, thank you so much. Well, my name is Derek Nagley and I'm here with Pacific University, Oregon. And in fact, if you were to apply to Pacific, I'm actually gonna be your admissions counselor here. And we're gonna start out on the West Coast. We're a small private liberal arts university. We're located in the town of Forest Grove. So for coming from out of state, you're gonna fly into Portland International Airport. It's actually the number one airport in the US right now. So it's a really amazing place to fly into. And where we're located is just on the edge of Portland Metro. So you get that big city because you're able to use mass transportation, fly into that big airport, get into downtown and watch a professional basketball game. But the other amazing thing with Oregon is what you see behind me and what you see in these pictures is it's that adventure into the Pacific Northwest. And our students are able to use Pacific as their home base to be able to get in and do those things, but then also explore in the Tillamook National Forest that you see behind me, which is only a 15 minute drive from campus, being on the Oregon coast in an hour or being sitting up on Mount Hood and skiing and snowboarding in the winter within two hour drive. So our students are perfectly positioned for that, but also being near places like Nike, Intel, Xerox, Columbia, you're gonna have that big opportunity to connect in with those companies that come along with the city as well. And at Pacific, as I mentioned, we're a smaller private liberal arts school. We have about 1900 undergraduate students, about 2000 grad students, but they're primarily on a different campus. So as an incoming freshman, you apply to Pacific. You don't have to apply to a specific major, a specific program, an honors college. You're applying to Pacific because we're giving all of our students, regardless of which of our 75 different majors, minors, and programs you choose, an honors level type education across the board. And we're best known for the health professions, pre-physical therapy, pre-optometry, but we have nationally and regionally ranked creative writing, education, and business programs, and a brand new sports marketing and sports management degree. So you're gonna have a lot of really cool opportunities to choose from a wide variety of programs while you're here. And no matter which of those you choose, you're in a small classroom. Our average class size is only 19 students. Our biggest lecture hall only seats 60 students. So your professors are going to know who you are. They're going to know your name. And at Pacific, those are truly professors. They teach every single class. There's no TAs doing any of the teaching while they're here. And most importantly, we know this is a big investment on your end. So we give our students a four-year guarantee that you can be in and out of Pacific with that degree in four years, no matter which of those programs you choose. The other side of that education while you're here is that we want you to build up the resume to back that up. So as the top private research university in the Pacific Northwest, we start you doing job shadowing research and internships for all of our students, freshman and sophomore year. So you can try out a major, you can have two years of teaching experience before you even graduate from undergrad. And that means our students have that resume to back up that education in the classroom. So they're ready to solve real world problems at places like Nike when they're a student here at Pacific. And that means our students are able to get into graduate school and go into internships and get a job, even in the crazy economy we're in right now, our students are very highly placed as soon as they step foot away from Pacific. And again, they're doing that in four years. But we also want our students to be able to take a break, to be able to take a deep breath while they're on campus and have an outlet. In fact, if you come to Pacific, you're gonna find very quickly, our students are really busy. They do three or four or five different things. And so all of those passions, identities, affiliations you had in high school that you wanna keep building on, you don't just have to pick one of those at Pacific. You can join some of our 70 different clubs and organizations, whether it's in student government or small Greek life, or maybe joining in our Hawaii club. Because at Pacific, about 15% of our students come from the island of Hawaii. So you can actually be part of the largest student-run luau anywhere on the mainland US. And even coming from Wisconsin, you could actually join in that group and dance on stage in front of thousands of students every year. Or maybe that means the performing arts and continuing those talents you might have in music, dance, or theater. You don't have to major or minor in those to be part of them. You get to be part of them as a student at Pacific. And for those of you interested in the athletics, 
you're able to be part of our 24 varsity NCAA Northwest Conference sports or our 20 intramural and 10 club sports. So there's a way to stay active for over a third of our students participating in athletics while they're here at Pacific without having to pull that out or having that separated from what they're doing as a student. We also want our students to take all of those skills they're learning, whether that's through the clubs and organizations, that education or those internships and solve world, real world problems. So we offer that up through our outdoor pursuits office where you can really take advantage of those adventures in the Pacific Northwest by kayaking on the Oregon coast or hiking up Mount Hood through winter break trips, spring break trips or weekend trips while you're a student here at Pacific. We also want to encourage you to study abroad if that's something you want to do, whether that's a full semester year at one of our direct exchange programs in over 27 different sites around the world, or doing a two to three week travel class with a professor for those of you that maybe that idea of a full semester abroad is a little bit scary. And giving back to the community. Our students give back a huge amount of hours every single year, and they do it both here locally in Forest Grove, maybe when they go home in the summer, or by connecting that with one of those travel abroad classes as part of their education while they're a student. So you have the opportunity to give back and solve those problems in the real world. And for those of you who are seniors, as I mentioned earlier, we do use that one application. It's Common App. It's the all online application that works for like 750 schools nationwide. Ours is completely free and we are on rolling admission. So you can apply anytime throughout the admissions process. I'm gonna be on the other end here to answer any questions you might have. But the amazing thing is when you apply to Pacific, you've also applied for our scholarship opportunities. And there's no in-state or out-of-state tuition and no in-state or out-of-state scholarship to Pacific. You have the same opportunities coming from Wisconsin as you did coming from Oregon. We offer merit scholarships from 15 to $27,000, special interest and talent awards for music, dance, and theater. And for those of you who are seniors, take advantage of our senior preview day to get more information than you got today. You can do it in person or online and you'll earn a thousand dollar a year scholarship for that as well. So as I mentioned, I'm your admissions counselor here. Please feel free to reach out with any additional questions you might have. You can scan that barcode, write down this email or copy and paste it from the chat because I'll put it in there right now. But thanks so much for listening and I look forward to talking to you more. Thank you, Pacific, or I'm sorry, Pacific University of Oregon. Our next presenter is the University of All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Ashley Brown and I serve as a regional associate director in the Office of Admission at UVM. Um, so the University of Vermont has around 10,000 undergraduate students and our average class size covers just around 32 students and our student to teacher ratio is 16 to one. I'll bring your attention to the statistic here on the left-hand side of the screen uh, in terms of our ratio to in-state to out-of-state students. This is very unique for a public state institution. Um, we have a lot of students coming from all across the country and around the globe to study at the University of Vermont. So we've got 73% of our students who come from out-of-state, while 27% of those students are native to Vermont. We have over 100 different programs that students can study at UVM. So some of our more popular programs include business, psychology, environmental studies and sciences, in addition to the health sciences as well. But broad exploration is encouraged at the University of Vermont. So if you're wanting to do a double major or have a major and a couple of minors, we definitely encourage that with students as well. All right, we've got a lot of distinctive qualities that we like to share about the University of Vermont. And some of our distinctive qualities can on the surface seem a little bit contradictory. So for example, the University of Vermont is old. We were founded in 1791 and we are the fifth oldest institution in the New England area after Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth and Brown. But we're also really new in the fact of constantly keeping pace with the changing world around us. And, just being ever cognizant of the changing society that we find ourselves in. It is also true that we are both big and small, so we're really big in comparison to some of those smaller liberal arts schools across the country, but also really small in comparison to some of those larger national research institutions as well. With us being urban and open, we are located in the beautiful city of Burlington. The downtown area is just about a 10 minute walk from campus where students can enjoy lots of shops and nightlife and restaurants. And with us being open, it means that our natural landscape is open. So our students are able to wake up every day, enjoy beautiful, vast, sweeping views of nature. And our campus is framed on the left and right hand sides by the Green and Adirondack Mountains. And we sit right on Lake Champlain, which is the sixth largest freshwater lake in the United States. 
We also have many different experiential learning opportunities for students. So around 91% of students are completing either an internship or a research opportunity before graduating from the University of Vermont. So on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see some recent internships uh, that our uh, students have completed with some pretty big name companies. So uh, students are finding these opportunities uh, via our career center, uh, their academic advisors, in addition to our faculty members as well. So we definitely support you in facilitating these uh, hands-on experiences. And we feel that experiential learning is just as important as the time you spend in the classroom with the professor. So while we value you getting that theory and that knowledge from your teachers, we feel that experiential learning is also a very critical component to a UVM education. This slide just highlights a little bit about our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We govern ourselves by six core common ground values that you can see here on the left-hand side of the screen. And we also have our campus identity centers for students who um, uh, come together and actively plan and engage with one another and put on uh, activities for the greater campus community. And for students who have a strong sense of common identity, they can also serve as a second home. So we have our Mosaic Center for Students of Color, we also have our PRISM Center for any students who identify as LGBTQIA+. We have our Interfaith Center, in addition to our Women and Gender Equity Center as well. We also have a very active Hillel on campus, and about 11% of our student body identifies as Jewish. All first-year students are required to live on campus for their first two years, and all first-year students are required to live in one of our living and learning communities. So students are placed into living and learning communities via their housing application. So um, students are able to rank these in order of preference on their housing app and around 90% of students are getting their first choice living and learning community while that other 10% are getting their second choice living and learning community. So our Office of Housing and Residential Life does a phenomenal job of really placing students where they want to be. Freshmen cannot have cars on campus, but that is not a problem. Our campus is incredibly walkable. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to walk from the very northern end of campus all the way to the very southern end. We do have an intercampus shuttle system if students choose to use that, but all in all, our campus is very manageable. All right, so a little bit about our admissions profile. We conduct a holistic review um, of uh, students' applications when they apply. So typically we're seeing students apply to the University of Vermont with around a 3.7 grade point average on a 4.0 scale. We are test optional for this recruitment cycle. So for any uh, seniors here who are maybe looking to apply a regular decision, we are test optional. And any juniors who are with us this evening, we will be test optional for next year as well. So absolutely no penalty uh, in the admissions process if you choose not to submit those test scores. Um, Students are automatically considered for scholarships upon being admitted to the university. So you'll see that 87% of our undergrads are receiving some sort of scholarship or financial aid from the University of Vermont. For out-of-state students specifically, those awards are going to range from $8,000 and going upwards into $20,000 per year. All students are also automatically considered for the Honors College upon being admitted to the university as well. And we typically are taking around the top eight to 10% of our applicants and offering them an invite to the Honors College. Um, so automatic consideration for all of those things. Um, and again, we are utilizing a holistic review process for that. So thank you all again so much. Um, again, my name is Ashley Brown. I'll put my contact information in the chat uh, if you would like to follow up with me or have any questions about the University of Vermont. Thank you so much. Thank you, University of Vermont. Our next presenter is the University of Wyoming. All righty, folks. Well, good evening to wherever you guys are joining us from. My name is Cade Russo. I'm the admissions representative with the University of Wyoming. I'm also the recruiter for the great state of Wisconsin and cannot wait to get back there, hopefully sometime this spring. So I, I lived three years uh, north of Milwaukee for a little bit, and so I I uh, could use a trip back. So we're going to be talking about why the world needs more cowboys. So we are located in Laramie, Wyoming, uh, just about two hours north of Denver, Colorado, to kind of put that into perspective. Uh, the University of Wyoming is really unique in the sense that we are the only really four-year university in the entire state of Wyoming. That is very, very special. Really only happens one place in the entire United States. Laramie sits at 7220, and so that's going to be our elevation, so 7,220 feet above sea level. We are the high 
highest division one institute in the entire country. And, and that really kind of brings us into some cool facts. We're 30 minutes away from amazing skiing and snow sports, over 100 plus miles of hiking and biking trails, sit just 15 minutes away from our college campus. Laramie is home to about 32,000 people, all right? And so it truly is a great small college town. It's also been ranked the number one small college town in the entire nation. And then nearly 3 million acres of national forests surround Laramie, so we truly, truly are an outdoor paradise. Looking at our student body and, and kind of getting into what we are made of, 11,800 students uh, call the University of Wyoming home. 14 to one is going to be our student factor ratio. We really pride ourselves on being able to, to be a medium sized institution, but offer those smaller, more personalized class sizes with it, that average class size being 30. You are gonna get connected to your faculty and those professors and really understand who they are as people, which is really fantastic. And then one thing that I absolutely love about the University of Wyoming since I worked in the athletics for four years is our Division I athletics. We do have 17 different Division I athletic teams here at the University of Wyoming. The, the Cowboys and Cowgirls, the pride and passion that people have in this institution simply is unmatched. So absolutely fantastic. Looking into where our students are coming from a little bit more, our student body is represented by all 50 states within the United States and then over 83 countries as well. And so that really makes us a really awesome culturally diverse place that, that brings in a lot of different points of view into the classroom. I really, really enjoyed this, especially with my business classes, what I was taking personally, and the different points of view that, that uh, students bring in from, from where they're from, right? However, with that being said, 57% of our students are from the great state of Wyoming. 43% of our students are considered non-resident students. And then one great point is that 95% of our students receive scholarships and financial aid, the average award right around $13,000 to the University of Wyoming. Looking at what our, our programs are, we, since we are a land-grant institution, we really have everything from A to Z, right? Being that we are the only four-year in the state of Wyoming, we have accounting all the way down to zoology. With that said, 85 different bachelor's programs for you to choose from across 200 different areas of study, double major and minor options, uh, really, really great opportunities for you to study here at the University of Wyoming. 800 plus of our students are involved in research annually, which is a great opportunity for you to build your resume and really get a unique experience. 800 plus students are enrolled within our Honors College as well. And so that's gonna be a really awesome and very unique opportunity. Uh, within that, eight colleges, two different schools, uh, everything from agriculture to engineering to business to education to our, our Hobbs School for Environment and Natural Resources to our School of Energy Resources, really, really strong programs across the board at the University of Wyoming. If you're thinking of a certain major, we probably got it, unless it's marine biology, because we're a little bit landlocked to offer marine biology at Wyoming. Education abroad is a huge thing at the University of Wyoming. We actually have the largest study abroad endowment of any public four-year land-grant institution in the entire United States. That's very, very cool. Over 400 different sites worldwide for you to choose from. That, that, that endowment really allows our students to study abroad affordably, which is fantastic. Like I said, financial aid, 95% uh, of our students do receive uh, scholarships and or financial aid. We have been ranked the third best value university in the entire nation, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then we are also number one on a list of 20 different states where college is actually worth the cost, which is great. Our main out-of-state scholarship to the University of Wyoming is going to be called the Brown and Gold Committee, folks. The way that it works, the higher your GPA and your ACT score, the larger your award could be. With that being said, with the ACT, we are test optional for fall 2022. Um, and so there's a lot of different categories. Look at the full grid online underneath our scholarships. And this is what it looks like, as you can see, kind of a sliding grid, high school, on way to GPA, ACT, you've got it right there. When it comes down to admission requirements, we're looking for four years of English, math, science, and then three years of social science, and then four years of additional coursework. So if you meet that, congratulations. No essays, no letters of recommendation, no really hoops to jump through. We are very, very accessible. We also operate on rolling admission, right? So as long as you have a 3.0 GPA, you're good to go. We will get back to you right around 10 business days from your application. With that application, please do apply. Very, very easy to apply. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, pay that $40 application fee through either our online application, through our website, or through the common application. We don't prefer one or the other, so choose either one of those. Really no main deadlines to, to worry too much about, uh, but I strongly recommend to get those applications in as soon as possible. 
we would love to host you for an in-person uh, tour at the University of Wyoming. We'd love to do that. We also have some great uh, virtual options as well. Take a, take a look at what our visit options are because putting your feet on the college campus really is going to give you the best opportunity to say, okay, what's this place all about? What's the soul of this institution? I think that that's really the best say, way to figure out, hey, could this place be the best fit for me? I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, this is my contact information. Feel free to take a picture of this right now and uh, go Pokes. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you, University of Wyoming. As a quick reminder, if you have any questions for our presenters, please use the Q&A button on your screen to send those questions over to them and they'll be able to respond to you directly. Our next presenter is the University of Arizona. Okay, hey, looks like we had some technical difficulties and lost the University of Arizona. We'll have them join us again in a few moments, but we would go, we'd like to go ahead and move on to the University of Oregon. All right, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna start sharing my screen, but as I am doing this, I will introduce myself. My name is Ryan Bottomore and I am your admissions counselor at the University of Oregon. And what does that mean particularly? So as you go through the application process, I definitely want to make sure that you are making sure you're reaching out and answering these or asking these hard hitting questions and how I am able to assist you through the application process. I am a UO alum, so I actually graduated about two years ago with two degrees, one in business administration and the other one in art and technology. So I have both the perspective of being a faculty member and staff member as well as a former student. So please let me know if you have any questions and I will make sure to put my information in the chat moving forward. So we are located in Eugene, Oregon, and this is a geography lesson of the day. And I know that my colleague who is from Pacific University, Oregon, already gave you kind of a general map of Oregon on the West Coast, but this is where we're located, particularly in Eugene. Eugene fluctuates between the second large, second and third largest city in the state of Oregon, and it is the quintessential college town. We're about an hour away from the Oregon coast, as well as about an hour away from the Cascade Mountains. So we're essentially located right in the middle of so many great outdoor adventures that students are able to explore. I do want to say that we are a middle to large size institution of around 22, 23,000 students. And of those, around 18,000 are undergraduate population. So we're really heavily focused in that undergraduate experience. We have students coming from every county in the state of Oregon, all 50 states, as well as about 90 different countries. So when you are participating in any clubs or organizations, you are joining um, and participating in classes, sitting in the student section at maybe Austin Stadium at a football game, you could be potentially near and meeting students all across the world. And I think that is really a, a, a phenomenal and rewarding learning opportunity that we provide our students. Even though we are a middle to large size institution, we do have the average class size of being a small institution with an average class size of 36 and a median class size of 19. So why specifically the University of Oregon? So like I said, we do have the class sizes of being a small institution and even our student to faculty ratio represents that. We, for every 17 students, there is one faculty member willing and able to assist in any capacity, shape or form. We are a research based institution where we are, we have the prestigious honor of being a part of the Association of American Universities, or the AAU, and this is where we do undergraduate and interdisciplinary research and roughly around three quarters of our students are actively involved in research in some way or another. We do have a variety of different academic programs. Specifically, we do have the Clark Honors College as well as departmental honors. So potentially within your major at the U of O, you can go through the challenging and more intensive program called the Clark Honors College or through those departmental honors. And then specifically, in addition to your academics, I do want to say that students have the ability to study abroad. And we have more than 300 different programs in 80 different countries and roughly around a quarter of our students study abroad. So these are just some of the highlights that I want to share specifically why the U of O is such a, a wonderful place. But here are some of our top majors academically. We have 168 to choose from spread out amongst our different professional schools and colleges. But we have advertising, architecture, biology, business administration, 
and economics, human physiology, as you can see, the list goes on and on, but we actually have a variety of them spread amongst our different professional schools and colleges. And I really encourage you to look at all of them. Um, the majority of students that actually come in their first year are undecided or exploring. So you actually don't have to come into the University of Oregon with a decided major. With that being said, we definitely want to encourage students to choose by the end of your second year so you still have plenty of time. Kind of switching gears a little bit, I do want to talk about student life because I think it is almost as equally as important as academics because it really is a way for you to find your community and find your friends at the U of O. Specifically, we have 300 different clubs and organizations. We have a variety of them that's separated based off of your personal interests. Maybe that's fraternity and sorority life, the outdoor program, juggling club, Quidditch club, or maybe you want to be a part of some of our academic clubs and organizations. So maybe you want to write for some of our on-campus newspapers or magazines. Maybe you want to participate in our TV broadcasting studio called Duck TV. Or maybe you want to be a part of some of our identity and affinity based clubs and organizations. Particularly, we have the Multicultural Center with a variety of different student unions like the Native American Student Union, the Black Student Union, the Latinx organizations, the Asian Pacific Islander, as well as we have the LGBTQIA, the Women's Center, the Men's Center, religion based affiliated clubs and organizations. So we have a variety to choose from and it's really up to you to make up and uh, to shape and mold what your college experience is going to be like. But the best way to live, uh, best way to start your experience at the U of O is by living on campus and it is a live on requirement. So all freshmen do have to live on campus for one year and roughly around 88% of students who live on campus are freshmen. So a lot of students at the, after their first year end up finding an apartment or a house afterwards. But I really encourage you to do your research at housing.uoregon.edu to really get a holistic and comprehensive overview of what all of the different houses housing opportunities we have available for our students. So I might have convinced you so far, I know that we only have six minutes, but I definitely wanted to touch on the admissions section. So like I said, I am your admissions counselor. And what do I look for specifically when I review your application? We are a holistic review. So I take into consideration your academic performance, your GPA, your grade trend, your course rigor, your senior schedule. But I also look at what are you doing outside the classroom, who you are as a community member and who you are as an individual. We are a test optional institution. And then the only other thing that is required is a 650 word personal statement. And there are a few other optional essays that you can provide context if you would like. And here are some deadlines. So November 1st has passed, but do not worry. Our actual deadline is January 15th. You just have to make sure you apply by that for not only admission, but for scholarship purposes as well. And you're guaranteed a decision no later than April 1st. And that gives you roughly a month by May 1st, National Decision Day. And I know there's a lot of, a, a lot of information in such a short amount of time, but if you would like any clarification or want more information, you can definitely stay in in touch. Like I said, my name is Ryan Bottomore, and you can reach me at this phone number, call or text, or you can send me an email. Um, and thank you so much, and go Ducks! Thank you, University of Oregon. We now have the University of Arizona back with us. Thank you so much. And so sorry about that, but thanks for, for hanging with me. Uh, my name is Emily Martinez and I am the admissions recruiter, the regional recruiter for the great state of Wisconsin. So um, I am here to help you um, through the process, the, answer any questions you have about Arizona, and then of course, help you through the enrollment process. Today, I'm just gonna give you a very quick overview of Arizona. University of Arizona, we are located in Tucson, Arizona. That's where our main campus is. We were founded in 1885. We started with three students and one building. We now have a beautiful square, one square mile campus. We now have about uh, 35,000 undergraduate students and another 10,000 graduate students making up our student community. We have a very diverse student body. Um, over 40% of our students come from out of state. In fact, we have students coming from every single state in the US, as well as over over 120 different countries. Uh, we also have a diverse body in the sense that we have over 44% of our students self-identifying as diverse. And even though we are a larger university, we are still able to offer a very personal educational experience. Class sizes uh, average between 20 and 29 students and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. 
So why do so many students from all over the country and really all over the world choose to study at Arizona? It's because we are a top tier, um, world-class institu institution ranked in the top 1% of universities in the world. Arizona is a premier tier one research one institution and a member of the prestigious Association of American Universities. Um, AAU or the Association of American Universities is an exclusive title um, for 65 colleges and universities from Harvard to Yale to UC Berkeley to the University of Arizona that focus on providing research opportunities to students. So of course we have countless opportunities for research, but we also have really great opportunities for internships, study abroad, service learning, and more. Those big time opportunities come with us having that big time reputation and being a larger university. There are tons of other advantages to being at a large public university of our size, like the number of degree programs we offer. We have over 300 different program options, which means we literally have just about any program to meet your educational needs. Some of our more popular programs include our nationally ranked public business college or our nationally recognized engineering programs, as well as college of education programs. We are also very well known for our pre health and medical science programs. We also compete nationally with our fine arts, specifically our dance program is one of the best in the entire country. Uh, but of course, with over 300 programs, we have plenty more to choose from. At Arizona, we aim to serve and support all learners. Our nationally recognized SALT Center, SALT is Strategic Alternative Learning Techniques Center, um, is designed uh, to support students who might need a little extra support or services while studying at Arizona, is an exclusive offering only available to students at the University of Arizona. But just keep in mind, a separate application is required. Not only do we have amazing opportunities um, academically, we also have a very active student life. We have over 600 different student clubs and organizations to participate in. Um, and although Arizona is a larger campus, our community makes it a big campus feel much smaller. Our student clubs range from academics to leadership, to student government, to special interests, to Greek life, to athletics and recreation and everything in between. There is something for everyone. My favorite student club is Zona Zoo. It is the official student section for Arizona Arizona Athletics, our Division I sports. Um, we have been consistently ranked by ESPN as the biggest, loudest, and best student section in the Pac-12 Conference, Go Cats. Um, again, Arizona is a Division I school, and we compete um, in the Division I NCAA Division I level. So very competitive, can really definitely get into that Wildcat pride. Another great way to get involved and to really find your home is to live on campus at Arizona. We actually are really unique in that we do not have any housing requirements or restrictions. We do not have any restrictions for first year students. You can choose if you want to live on or off campus. All 23 of our dorms house freshmen through seniors. Um, so you get to choose where you'd like to live on campus or off campus. And if it's on campus, you also get to choose where. Although it's not required, more than 75% of first year students do choose to live on campus. Tucson is very much a college town. The University of Arizona is definitely the heart of the city. It offers great art scene, electric shops, coffee spots, restaurants, concerts, festivals, and so much more. Um, we also like to boast that we have the best 23 miles of Mexican food in the nation. Um, one of my favorite things to highlight, especially being from the Midwest, is the gorgeous weather. Tucson has an average school time temperature of 83 degrees and over 300 days of sunshine. What's not to like about that? Uh, it leads to a lot of outdoor recreation, hiking, biking, camping, and climbing are all huge in the Southwest area. If that all sounds great and you want to apply, here's how. It is very easy. Um, we accept the Common App, the Coalition App, our own online application. We work on rolling admission. We do not require essays. Personal statements are optional. Recommend recommendation letters are not considered, and we are also test optional. We evaluate students on some very simple criteria. It's just, uh, defined as core classes, de defined by the Arizona Board of Regents, so ABOR core competencies. We take, we want to make sure the students have completed these courses, and then we also take the grades earned from these courses through your junior year to calculate what's known as your core GPA. Your core GPA is then used to determine your admissibility to the school, any select academic program you've applied to, and your scholarship eligibility. Our merit scholarships uh, for the fall 2022 cycle are based again on that core GPA. There is no separate application. You are automatically reviewed for scholarships when you are reviewed for admission to the university. You can see the scale here for our out-of-state students. 
If you would like to continue to connect with us, I invite you to check out this website. It has so many great options for visits, um, either virtually or in person. We are always happy to connect with you. Uh, and again, my name is Emily Martinez, and I am your admissions recruiter. I will put my contact information in the chat, but thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, University of Arizona. Our final presenter is the University of Wisconsin-Madison. All right, good evening, everyone. And thank you for taking some time to, to come here and uh, speak with us. Um, my name is Mark Swenson. I am the Alumni Relations and National Recruitment Manager here at UW-Madison. Um, and I'm also a two-time alumnus of the university. So hopefully I can bring a little bit of the student perspective to our conversation this evening. But I do wanna go ahead and, and jump right on into our contact and give you the overview. Um, of course, we are the public flagship institution here in the state of Wisconsin, um, being the largest institution in our 14 campus University of Wisconsin system. Um, so with that, again, we're the oldest school in the state. Um, we're also the largest. So we do have over 30,000 undergrads students on campus. That size may be very exciting to some and could be leaving some of you feeling like that's a pretty large place. Um, as a student who came from a very small school background here in Wisconsin, um, that was definitely a transition for me. But what I really found was that with this much variety and resources that were available to me in this large school environment, I was able to very quickly find the sense of comfort um, in, the, the, in what we have here at UW. And beyond that, uh, the diversity of our community is, is, I think, one of our great strengths and that we do draw students from all 50 states all around the country, 120 countries around the world, people coming to campus that you're going to be able to engage with from incredibly different walks of life than yourself. Um, but do know that we are have a commitment to our state of Wisconsin, and 56% of our undergraduate student population is coming here from the state of Wisconsin. So we have a strong presence and want to uphold um, that status as that flagship institution within our state. Uh, as a student here, uh, many of you have perhaps uh, been to Madison before, but I think the city is, is truly one of the, the best pieces about being a student here. Um, Madison obviously is the state capital, so we are very much a economic and, and cultural hub within the state. Um, and while you're going to find a lot of the amenities you might find in a much bigger metropolitan area, you're still in a city that is a great size, 250,000 residents, that's still really easy to navigate. Uh, Madison has been rated as being obviously one of the top college sports towns in the country, so if you do want that opportunity to support your school spirit, of course you're going to be able to do so uh, right here within the city and having close access to uh, you know a great deal of internship opportunities i think another great benefit um, that our students have to access right within their own backyard on top of that, um, UW-Madison, again, being in the in the backyard of many of us that are coming here from the state of Wisconsin, um, it, we are a truly a world-class institution. Uh, and I think the driving factor in us becoming one of the top resource institutions in the world is this thing called the Wisconsin Idea. This is a huge connection point for our student body, and I think something that um, not only our students, but our alumni really uh, really try to connect to. And this is this belief that the knowledge and learning that you're acquiring here in the classroom of Wisconsin should not be bound to the four walls of that room. And it really is a challenge to take that and in some way better the lives of people in your community, in your state, and across the globe. So it's a forward-thinking attitude. It's a commitment to others. It's a challenge to make sure that you're doing something with this degree um, beyond your time with us that, again, I think is really the thing that our badgers really connect to um, during their time and, and taking it far after. When it comes to academics, you're absolutely going to be challenging the academic rigor of our classrooms. I think variety is a huge takeaway here. Um, with 126 academic majors that span across our eight schools and colleges, there's so much that you're going to be able to choose from to create that incredibly unique experience to yourself. Um, our certificate programs are essentially our equivalent to a minor. They just take a very interdisciplinary approach. So that's why we choose to call them something different. But they're a great complement to our major level programs. Um, and I wish I could talk here about all of our eight schools and colleges, but we admit students on behalf of them. So we don't have completely separate admissions processes for each one of them. A of majors I will highlight are some of the newest majors that we have on campus. Um, some very relevant, I think, to what we're dealing with with the pandemic currently, including global health within the College of Ag and Life Sciences. On top of that, supply chain and management is the newest um, undergraduate major within the Wisconsin School of Business. And we just it was just announced just about a month ago that we are going to be building a brand new school of computer data and information sciences, which is going to be the, the home to a number of our majors, including computer science, which is the number one most popular on our on our campus as of this last year. Forgive me. Um, to talk, I want to talk obviously about our admissions process and hopefully pull back the curtain in the brief time that we have here uh, with one another together today. So our holistic review process, you hear that term and you may want to know what it means, but really what it means here at UW-Madison is that we are truly looking at every single element of your application and making that final determination on your admission. And that there's no formula, we're not using a formula and there's no perfect combination of any of these factors that is either going to guarantee or disqualify a student from admission to the university. First and foremost, we're looking for academic excellence, but on top of that, we want to learn about you outside of the classroom. What are your aspirations? Who are you as an individual? What is your unique story and what are you going to be bringing to our campus community? 
Um, you're going to see the things that we're going to be asking for when it comes to grades and coursework. Believe it or not, I'm going to be looking at your GPA for a really, really short period of time. I want to know what it means. So I'm going to understand your high school before then trying to understand that GPA, looking at your day to day academic work, what you not only what your grades are, but the type of rigor that you've taken. Have you been able to engage in some of the rigorous courses that are accessible to you within your school? And we know that's going to look different from student to student, but then we're going to layer in things like um, uh, perhaps test scores. We are test optional this year. Um, and I can tell you with great confidence that if you choose not to submit a test score, you are not disadvantaged whatsoever in our admissions process. Last year, we received 53,000 applications. 48% of those students chose not to submit a test score to us. So that is absolutely okay. Um, the essays, we do require two, and we also require one letter of recommendation coming from an academic source. So do keep that in mind. We do have two, two um, uh, application periods, including our early action deadline, which has just passed. But don't worry, if you haven't submitted your application, you still have opportunity to do so in a regular decision. We do not release decisions on a rolling basis. So please be patient with us if you submitted an EA. We're working really diligently through this holistic review to get those decisions out to you no later than the end of January. The last thing I will mention in our last about 30 seconds that I have here today is um, <clears throat> a couple of pathways as well as financial aid opportunities. Um, so do know we have a strong commitment to our students here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, if you are submitting the FAFSA and your family's adjusted gross income is $65,000 or less, um, you qualify for Bucky's tuition promise, which is guaranteed tuition and fees fully covered by the university. Um, on top of that, we do have a variety of transfer agreements. We want to recognize that that is a really viable pathway in coming to UW-Madison. We bring in a, a really robust transfer class of just over about 1,200 every single year. So um, we're uh, really excited about that and do know that we have some guaranteed transfer agreements with some of our two-year colleges here in the state of Wisconsin, as well as with a number of technical colleges. So again, if uh, maybe UW-Madison isn't the spot right now, but it could be down the road, please do know that that is an option. I will share my contact information um, in the chat here, um, along with some other resources to learn a little bit more about UW-Madison. But we do thank you all for your time and joining us tonight. Thank you, UW-Madison. We have time for just a brief Q&A here. So I'd like to invite our panelists to join me on camera uh, for one final question here. My one question to you all, and please feel free to respond in the order you presented, is what is one thing you want students to remember about your college or university? I think if there's one thing I want you to remember about Pacific, it's the idea of being able to come out and have this amazing outdoor adventure in the Pacific Northwest while getting that really strong degree and not giving up any of those things you have a passion or a talent for in high school, but being able to mix all that together in the small school. One thing I would like students to remember about the University of Vermont is that you can come to campus and absolutely be yourself. Um, we have so many different types of students from so many different backgrounds and walks of life. And um, that is embraced on our campus. So um, come to UVM, be exactly who it is that you are and celebrate your identity. One thing that I would say, you know, to students maybe considering the University of Wyoming would be uh, really the unbeatable opportunity our students have to build a resume. Being that we are the only four year in the entire state, all the resources, everything that you could ever want and need is going to be underneath one roof. And that really is a huge, huge advantage for our students. I want to echo everything that my colleagues have said. I definitely want to emphasize the, the community that is the Oregon Ducks. I think having the connection to a, a, a recognizable worldwide brand that is the University of Oregon is something where if you have duck gear on and you are traveling the world or traveling the country, you will find other individuals who are duck fans, they will show their O, they will yell, go ducks. And so just the community, the pride that we have for being Oregon ducks, I would say is something that I feel like would be unmatched and something that is to, to be celebrated amongst the Oregon community and even worldwide. And at the University of Arizona, um, I would say that they definitely offer the whole college experience, the whole package. We have the academic opportunities and the proven success of our students and all that we offer. But at the same time, we're fun. We have those um, that student life, that active uh, student life. You have an opportunity to connect with a wide variety of students and make those lifelong friendships. So you really get the best of both worlds at the University of Arizona. With UW-Madison, I think we really want students to really embrace their unique path. 
And uh, I talked about something like a, like a transfer pathway as a way to get access to UW-Madison. But if you're coming in as an undecided student, or you might change your mind along the way, I think there's a lot of pressure to have everything figured out as a 17 or 18 year old. And I think being, an, I know that many others can, can say this, but I think particularly at UW, we do, I think a, a really good job of helping students find that fit and knowing that your, your path may not necessarily be linear, but we wanna make sure that we can support you with a variety of resources to make sure that you're finding that best fit for your needs, both academically in the classroom, but outside of it. And if you're um, showing that level of self-advocacy to take advantage of the resources accessible to you, you can create a pretty incredible experience with us. Awesome, thank you all so much for presenting. It sounds like we have some awesome places to check out here. We are out of time, so I'd like to share my screen with you all one more time to share a couple of uh, closing remarks on tonight's session. So thank you to our guests who are able to join us. When you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. You'll be able to find the recording for this session as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Wisconsin. Thank you all for joining us and hope you have a wonderful evening.